Hey, I'm Janet with Optimal Aging, and I'm here to bring you some information about osteoporosis, different ways that we can actually measure our bone density, and more importantly, our fragility score. Now, up to this point, we're really held hot, hostage by DEXA scans, and they are not reliable. There are so many ways that they can fail us, but there is one technology that is far more reliable that is easy to access. Today I'm bringing you a Zoom video that I had with a couple of amazing ladies that are connected with uh, OsteoSound, which is the company that I had the pleasure of getting my REMS scan done with, and they will explain what the process is, what REMS is, what you go through, and then actually take my results and go through them in real time so that you can see and understand exactly what it is that you are looking at and why this is so much better than your traditional DEXA scan. So I would like to introduce these ladies, but to do them justice, I would like to read their bios to you so that I don't miss anything or screw it up. So Margaret Wallace Duffy, is the lady that you're going to be hearing most of the explanation from. She is an award-winning, passionate, registered massage therapist and inspiring speaker with over 30 years of experience running her own integrative wellness clinic and healthcare community. It's her mission to educate and empower Canadians with the resources and knowledge to improve their health esteem so that they can advocate for their health. She is a visionary behind the Preventive Health Awareness Month recognized by Health Canada. Now, the second lady that you are going to see on the screen with me uh, was doing so from her mobile phone, and you will see her in the smaller box over to the side. And her name is Megan Burmester. And she is the founder of OsteoSound and a registered diagnostic medical sonographer. She has 25 years experience in the healthcare field, uh, and she discovered Echo Light's innovative REMS technology, seeing its potential for advancing bone health analysis. Her company, OsteoSound, is on a mission to direct not only healthcare providers towards new conversations about bone health, but also communities as a collective. OsteoSound is dedicated to the pursuit of providing safe and convenient uh, bone analysis. So... Throughout this, if you check, it, it is a lengthy video. It's 45 minutes long or so, but I will put a time breakdown below in the comments so that you can jump right to the area that you like. Now, I recommend listening to the full video, and if you find it a little slow, just increase the speed so that you can get the information but get through it faster to the area that you specifically want to hear. I think this, this is an amazing tool. It did highlight some of the things that were different from my DEXA scan, and I'm certainly going to be using this resource as I move forward. Okay, Janet. So Megan and I are really excited to, uh, well, first of all, we want to congratulate you for uh, taking ownership of your health and coming to get your REM study done. It's really important, and we're on a mission to to not only be the leaders in bone health education and to empower you to have a more comprehensive look at your bone health. So not just bone quantity, but bone quality or that fragility risk fracture score. But we're also committed to integrative health education and preventative health education, because that is critically important um, for you to be able to make informed decisions about your health. And so that's why we're here today. Not only now, now that you've had the scan, it's wonderful, but we also want to empower you and stock your toolbox with education so that you can have conversations with your healthcare team so that you can feel that your health esteem is improved so that you can make more informed decisions when it comes to your treatment plan, whether it be with exercise, whether it be with nutrition, whether it be with supplements. Um, I want to be very clear that Megan and I are not physicians. I am a therapist. I did own a, an award-winning integrative health clinic for 30 plus years. Megan is a sonographer for over 25. We share um, a common vision to educate and empower um, you to be an advocate for your health. But we're also believe in a better together as one philosophy of care. And we have in our network, a team of other healthcare professionals actually globally 
that believe in this mission and also this technology, but this mission to really provide a comprehensive look at health, and in this case, bone health, to help you have some options to consider. So we can, and, and our mandate really, is to educate you and connect you when needed um, to, the, to the experts that can help you make informed decisions. And we do that through consultations during our REM scan, but just so you know as well, Janet, we do it through our FAM, Preventative Health Awareness Movement podcast, which you can check out, um, as well as our new CEO of Your Health portal, which is a learning hub that's coming, which will be a trusted resource with all types of practitioners from both conventional and complementary medicine. Notice I didn't say alternative. Yeah, and I, I want don't to believe just to say for this video that that FAM is P-H-A-M. Correct. Yes. Preventative Health Awareness Movement, FAM, exactly. So you can join our family by wanting to be empowered to understand what you can do preventatively because we're trying to shift the mindset and the lens of the average Canadian um, or globally to that this pill for an ill wait till it's broken approach to healthcare. And I say healthcare because really it's sick care. We wait till people are sick or in this case, till they've broken a bone before they we act where we want to be more proactive and preventative. And that's why this REMS bone scan for me as a clinician just Ooh. fires me up because it provides us with so much information. And at a younger age, you know, Megan always talks about the importance of the generational, sh the change in the generational conversation around bone health. This isn't an old person's disease. Yeah. This should be, we should be talking about this in our twenties and thirties or in, a, in the teens. And what's cool and what REMS enables us to do is to give a baseline for anyone 21 years and older, a comprehensive look at their bone health. So now they have a baseline moving forward when they hit different milestones in life, whether they've had a baby, maybe they've been put on medications that could impact their bone health, which could be things like maybe you're asthmatic and you're on steroids that can impact bone health. Maybe you've had diabetes or cancer. Maybe you've got poor gut absorption or thyroid or parathyroid issues. These are all things that impact bone health and, and the decline because what we do know is that peak bone mass happens at around the age of three. And then over time, as we age, it starts to decline. Now, the speed and severity of that decline is greatly impacted by all the things I just talked about. Your nutrition. Are you a smoker? Do you drink alcohol? Do you have underlying conditions? Um, are you sedentary? Yes. Are you on birth control? And that's the one that shocked me. At 15, I went on birth control. I was on it for all of my mass bone production years. Yes, exactly. If you've had a baby, we don't think when we're we're holding a bundle of joy and we're excited and we've we're starting we're young and we're healthy and vibrant. We're not thinking ahead. We're not thinking that what we do now or don't do now could be impacting what we can do or can't do 10 or 20 years from now. And that's where preventative health, but more important, the education, which we're excited to share with you today in collaboration with people like you that really are a, a champion for this kind of thing is so critically important. And because if we know better, we can do better and we can get into action rather than reaction when we have that diagnosis. So we know peak bone mass happens at around the age of 30, but here's the sad part as well. There's been an epidemic with, with teens and young people with eating disorders and, yes. and their nutrition is terrible. So you may find that when you have your first REM scan at 21, that your peak bone mass isn't where it actually could or should have been. And so knowledge is power. And let me say this, because we get this a lot, Megan, I'm sure you can weigh in on this. There can be, a, there is a lot of fear around this topic of bone health. And it, some of it's created by our healthcare system. I'm going to name it like it is. There's a lot of fear. You're going to fracture when you roll over and, and you've got osteoporosis and <laughs> your, your T-score is, is terrible. Sorry? Yeah, no, I, I just, oh. I can hear my doctor saying, um, you now have osteoporosis. You can't bend, twist, or lift anything. And I went home thinking, well, yes. what in life can I do then? Right. And then that paralysis and fear 
is is what makes you do what you do in your life, which could contribute to more bone loss, let alone mental health. And we can't separate mind and body. And, and when cortisol levels, we know that the stress hormone cortisol has a massive impact on bone health in a negative way if it's out of control. And so it's so important. This is not about creating fear. It's about creating empowerment. Knowledge is power. Even if you come and you get a REM study and you find out, oh my goodness, I have a picture that isn't as good as I had hoped. Now you have the power, especially when you're young, to get into action, to change some of your lifestyle, to not only prevent further decline, but we've even seen with effort, and let me state that, anything in life that you want to succeed in, it doesn't come just with waving a wand, it comes with effort. But if you take a look at your nutrition, and if you take a look at your exercise, and you take a look at your stress levels, and you get people on your team to support you to be the CEO of your house, you can reverse some of these changes in your early years. So think of this as an opportunity for change, as an opportunity to actually get into the driver's seat of your health versus as a, as a fearful um, situation where you, you freeze and you do nothing and then you decline further, which unfortunately is sort of the mindset, a pill for an ill. And, and now as we age, I mean, I believe that we deserve to live well at every age and stage of life and that we don't have to just wait, you know, it, that being well is for your youth. No, but it takes effort. So let's be candid about that. So it's really important. So when it comes to the REMS bone scan, um, we know that with DEXA, which has been the standard of care for, for looking at bone health um, for years now, really focuses on something called the T-score. Now, what's the T-score? The T-score is a measure of bone mineral density how much bone, the quantity of bone you have in, in your body. Now, as we said, that peak bone mass, that peak bone mineral density happens at around the age of 30 and starts to decline as we age. Now, a lot of what we do and how we do it can change that decline, but it's only one piece of the puzzle. And whether you have a DEXA or you have a REMS, you will get a T-score. Now, that T-score is comparing you to a database of, of 30 year old women with peak bone mass. So they're looking at, okay, comparing you to these women with strong, healthy peak bones, peak bone mass, how do you compare? And so many people say, well, I'm not 30. I understand that, but that's giving you what, what would be the ideal. And they're comparing you and then they're giving you a number. To be diagnosed with osteoporosis, your T-score should be, is minus 2.5 or greater. So the minute you hit that threshold, You've got osteoporosis. If you're prior to that in, a, in what we call the yellow zone, which I'll show you in, a, in your report in a minute, you're considered osteopenic. So you've got lower bone mineral density, not as much bone um, density. But what this does not give you, both in the DEXA, but what the REMS does, is looking at your bone quality or your bone strength. The microarchitecture or the inside of the bone, not just the quantity of bone, but your strength. And what the latest research has shown that in fact, although for 40 years, we have based treatment plans on a T-score and people are put on medications or suggested they, they can go on, which sometimes is life altering medications by phosphonates and others uh, for osteoporosis. It's actually not bone mineral density, that T-score that's the most important predictor or accurate predictor of whether you'll fracture due to osteoporosis. It's actually what's called your fragility risk fracture score or your bone strength. And here's so, the, yes, go up ahead. Up to this point, what we have had available to us to measure that uh, fracture risk is the FRAX, F-R-A-X, which puts you through a series of um, questions based on your lifestyle and your age, and then it determines uh, what your future risk is going to be. And for myself, before we get a look at what your tool, what the REMS tool tells me, I have only one factor that comes in on the FRAX score, which is my age, because uh, everything else I don't mm -hmm. drink, I don't have rheumatoid arthritis, I don't have anything else. And it puts me at a high risk a fracture when I use that tool, which is very different from what your scan 
is giving me and it just thrills me to death so we, because this frax tool is um a very static thing and it it's it really doesn't give it has no bearing on my activity level and and anything else just a set of stats that it's comparing it to sorry for the interruption right it is limiting no, it's no, it's very important point. And thank you for raising it. It's it, and and this is what excites us about this new fragility risk fracture score that the REMS, you know, the osteosound REMS is able to give us. And um, it does look at more comprehensively. And, and actually, we're going to be sharing a, a, a global REM symposium webinar that Megan and I hosted with some leaders across the globe for using REMS. These are orthopedic surgeons and PhDs and and really. And, and we can talk, we won't say, but in that talk about how to score, it's a really important piece because if you have good bone strength, even if you don't have good bone mineral density, so you can have a poor T score and be sitting in fear because you've got osteoporosis and you've now been told, don't bend over and you're going to roll over in bed and fracture and you're petrified and your life impacted. But you don't know your bone quality. And what the latest research coming out of Italy um, has shown us is that, in fact, the bone strength or that fragility risk fracture score is a better, more accurate predictor of whether you will fracture due to osteoporosis than the T-score is. And so we have been focusing for now when we know better, we should do better. So let's not let's not poo poo what DEXA has done. It was a state of the art tool when it came around. But what I believe, and as a science girl, a bit of a science geek, when we know better, we should do better. And when we have technology that changes and at our fingertips that we can use, we should be open to it. I will say this, and it's maybe a bit controversial, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Our friends in conventional medicine, and I have many friends that are doctors and surgeons and radiologists, they're taught one way. And this wait till things are broken, and this is what they've always used. So this is what they should always use. There's resistance to change. And I'm not going to go into, there's a lot of reasons, some positive, some not so positive of why they stay to their old ways. But one thing we do know about DEXA, and this is very clear, and Dr. Kim Zambino makes reference to this in our, our, our symposium that we'll be sharing. There is, it's well documented that there's 90% errors in DEXA. And of those 90% errors, 50% are significant. And if you're a small boned woman, it is not kind. DEXA is not kind to women. So it gives you inaccurate results. But here's the scary part about that. Now we have an inaccurate result that was created fear, but even worse, we're basing treatment plans on that flawed result. When in fact, we don't know the bone quality and what Megan and I have been seeing, we've, we've scanned over 300 people, which means upwards of, of 900 studies because we do both hips and a back when you come to see us. We are seeing time and time again, this is not isolated, Janet, where somebody has a really horrible T-score and sometimes that's an error in DEXA because there's errors in DEXA due to positioning, due to calibration, due to poor... Um, you know, the technician isn't on their game. I mean, Dr. Zambito talked about technicians scanning somebody with a total hip. You can't do that with DEXA with a total hip replacement. You're going to get an inaccurate result. And then they're basing a treatment plan on inaccurate results. Whereas with REMS, not only are you going to get your T-score with no radiation, it's mobile, we can do it anywhere, we can scan you anywhere, They're, you're not in a lead room, but you're gonna also get, you're also going to get the bone quality, the bone strength, uh, or that fragility risk fracture score, which is really a better indicator of whether you will fracture due to osteoporosis in the next five years. Now that can inform us in a more confident way what our treatment plan should be from a if medications are indicated or not, what nutrition and exercise. And the other cool thing, which Megan and I are thrilled about, is the sensitivity of REMS is better than DEXA. Therefore, if we can show changes in and around eight months to a year. We say come back in a year. Um, but Dr. Zambito made reference to six months. If you do the work, and we actually have had a case where a young 
mid forties woman was diagnosed with pretty significant osteoporosis, but she got to work with her nutrition, with her resistant exercise, with her stress, uh, with her supplements. And she came back eight months later with tears. We were crying. She was crying because she had changed her scores and her fragility risk fracture score improved. Her T score improved. That's called empowerment. But you can only empower by having evidence information in it advance. That you me. Mean. When I go to my doctor and I read all of these doctor reports saying there is no way that you can reverse your osteoporosis. There's no way you might be able to slow down the progression, but you cannot regain old bone back. And no, you can't. You want to encourage new bone. So, yes. And of course, I want to preface here by saying everyone's different. We're not, yes. we're, you know, we're not making a blanket statement here. You need to seek help with, and, and that's why we're having the CEO of your health portal, because where you can have conversations with a wide range of health professionals about your particular, this is not meant, what I'm telling you here is education. This is not meant to Absolutely. be medical advice, but even understanding this, so you can ask the right questions, so you can find the right professionals and feel confident asking the right questions to get the answers you need to make an informed decision. Because even then, I'm going to give an example of my beautiful mother, Mary, who's 80 years old. And she was one of the first people that we scanned when we brought the device to Canada about a year ago in August. And my mom's severe osteoporotic and has a high fragility risk fracture score. So not only does she have low bone mineral density, but she has a high risk of fracture. Her bone quality or bone strength is a good. And there's, for, there's many reasons for that. Some underlying conditions play at, at heart. But here's the difference. Here's my mom. My mom is fiercely independent and has always been an advocate for preventative health. And unfortunately, your bone health, just like mine, I'm osteopenic. Some of my health conditions and certain things that happened to me as a young person, um, some that were out of my control, have impacted my bone health. And she knew this. She ended up having two vertebral fractures earlier this year, thanks to an incredible intervention radiologist, Dr. Christopher Guest. He did a vertebral pla two vertebral plasties. My 80-year-old mother is now doing a 90-second plank. I, I, I know a lot of people 50 years old that can't do a 90-second plank. She exercises. She takes her supplements. She eats well. She knows protein's important. She's leaning in and doing all her tools. She's using the low-intensity vibration plate. She's using all her tools in her toolbox. And she has made a conscious choice, even though she's a, she's a candidate for, for medications. If you're looking at, okay, She's got a high risk of fracture. She's got high bone mineral density loss. So she should be on, on drugs. The answer is some may choose to do that. And we're not passing judgment on that. My mother has chose not to. She also has chosen not to because she has a lot of side effects. She's not been one to take drugs when she does. She gets horrible side effects. She's 80 years old, living independently and, and living well. So she's willing, she's now aware. So what this REMS did made her very aware that she shouldn't be jumping on the countertop like she did and fell to break, <laughs> to spark, fracture her spine. She's more careful because she has awareness about the fragility of her bones, but she's choosing with informed consent to understand why she's choosing for her not to take those drugs. There may be someone else that chooses to take them and that's okay too. But what Megan and I are on a mission to do is ensure that we, in fact, allow people to make informed decisions instead of being told, you got to get on Prolia or, or Actinel or Fos or whatever, and petrified, and then having fallout and side effects from those drugs. And then they come and have their REMS and find out my bone quality is excellent. And maybe if I'd known that, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have gone on the drugs to begin with. This is, these are the conversations we're having in our clinics and pop-up clinics across the country and why we're so honored to be able to have these conversation, this conversation with you today, because it's really important that you have a comprehensive picture. So when we talk about that, let's talk about your results. So you've made mention, or could you share with us, you know, sort of what your DEXA showed. You said that you were told you're osteoporotic um, and that you had a high risk of of a fra of fragility fracture due to osteoporosis, correct? So my last DEXA scan was about 18 months ago. I actually do have my next one um, scheduled for next Tuesday. So this, this is really convenient the way it worked out. 
with that scan, my uh, spinal T score was uh, minus 1.9. So I was osteoporotic there. And my, I guess, left hip, because they only did one, was minus 2.5. At that point, my doctor said, I really would like you to go on Actinel. And I told him, absolutely not. You know me, I don't take pills. I, I will do this naturally. He grimaced. Uh, I won't go through the conversation, but he wasn't happy. So I did much like everybody else. I, I came home and I hit Google and spent two weeks of research and feeling worse every day. Every Everything I read made me feel even worse. Um, my frac score put me at high risk of fracture because of my age, which is 67. Um, and postmenopausal, uh, I guess is the big thing. And so from there, I, I went through the, the standard search of uh, how do I get the right calcium, which one's not going to constipate me? How do I add it into my diet? Oops, I was supposed to be taking other supplements other than calcium because I was not told. Um, what types of exercising can I do? So I, I'm a research nut. So it was okay, it kind of fit for me, but I became painfully aware through my social media following that so many people are just following the lack of information that they're getting and going straight on um, to the drugs and stopping everything and doing some exercising that really isn't going to benefit them. Right. Which is which leads me to so many wonderful people such as yourself and uh, Megan. Well, thank you. And and thank you for sharing your story, because it, you're not alone. And and you made a very good point that you're a research nut and you went home and you went on the good old Dr. Google, which can be a great resource. But for a lot of people, too, it can be a rabbit hole that takes us to places that A, isn't positive, B, that may or may not be accurate, because can you trust what you're reading? And there's so much information Absolutely. out there. It's great that you put our fingertips. And that's why we're, we're wanting to create this hub where people can go where they can trust uh, the professionals that they're seeing in one place, because we're committed to integrative health. Bone health isn't just on its own. It's overall health. And therefore, you know, there's a lot of sites that really focus just on bone health. Megan and I are really focused on integrative health because there's so many factors, as you alluded to, that impact our bone health. And therefore, um, for a lot of people, this is just overwhelming. And you're right. They just decide to go on these meds. And I know, Megan, you want to hop in here. And I want to say this, well, my mental, menopausal brain remembers it. And that, and that is this, that, um, see, now I'm going to forget what it was. Oh my goodness. Not only, oh my goodness, what was it? It'll come back. Let me just see, because I think Megan, did you want to? I was just sorry. I went something? through. I went through a strange area there. But I, I, oh, Janet, when you were mentioning your DEXA report, you said minus one point nine for your spine. Did you mean minus two point nine? No, my my spine was osteopenic. Oh, sorry. I thought you said it was osteoporotic. But yeah, you said minus one point nine. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that before we got into your report. That's good. Yeah, that, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, so it's really important. Oh, I know what I wanted to say um, that, that I just forgot a second ago. So yeah, so people, as you mentioned, will, uh, you know, be put on medication because their doctor says they have to. And there's a lot of forceful, like, we're hearing really discouraging, I just discouraging stories about like serious, serious fear mongering about if you don't, go on this drug. And we had somebody yesterday, did we not Megan? And this was a bit, a bit of an eye opener that she was told by her endocrinologist that the drug company would be calling her to discuss the, the oh. medication she was gonna go on. Um, and, and the costs associated with it. That's a bit of a, a concern to me, um, but one of the things that we're not being told is something called, and now one of the medications that's common for people to be put on is called Prolia. Yes. And what I want people to know is that there's something called Prolia rebound phenomenon. And I was dismayed to find out that not only many doctors, but also many pharmacists that actually dispense that drug to their patients, don't know what proli rebound phenomenon is. And why do I know that? Because I've taken it upon myself to interview 10 pharmacists that I trust. They're great people. They're well-informed. Um, we need them. But when I asked, do you know what proli rebound phenomenon was? Out of 10, 
all 10 did not know what that was. And they said, oh, I know what prolia is. And they were able to tell you everything about what it does for osteoporosis. But they didn't know what prolia rebound phenomenon was. And what it is, is that if you stop or pause prolia without a relay drug, supervised without a relay drug, it can cause, and ironically and tragically, vertebral fractures or osteonecrosis of the jaw, causing people's teeth to fall out. And when that sounds like something crazy, Megan and I have not seen one or two. We've seen countless in the last year of these types of things where multiple spinal fractures and osteonecrosis of the jaw for people because they stopped prolia. And why did they stop prolia? Because they were having horrible side effects. And what's our human nature? When we have side effects, we want to stop. And so because their doctor didn't know that that could cause issues, because the pharmacist didn't know, they stopped. And lo and behold, and whether that was with one injection or several, and that's also an eye opener. And I'm not saying that every this is every person's experience. But once again, as we talked about at the beginning of our call, knowledge is power. You need to make informed decisions. And, when, and if they had known that stopping abruptly once they start it could cause that, I would guarantee you that that wouldn't be what they'd choose to do. And now they're dealing with severe consequences of prolia rebound phenomenon. And then what's even more heartbreaking is that they've come in and been scanned by Megan and found out that in fact, they've got good bone strength. Their microarchitecture, their bone quality is good. And they shouldn't have been on prolia to begin with. Now that, to me is tragic because we need to have a whole comprehensive picture. So I wanted to say that before sharing, um, sharing, you know, your scan here and, and talking a little bit about and showing the report, because right. what I also want everybody to, when you come to a scan at OsteoSound, Megan and I, you're going to have the scan um, prior to coming to the scan, you're going to get a really cool animated video, which we're happy to share with you to share with your followers of what to expect so that, you're informed before you even walk in the room and meet us what what to expect. And after you're going to get a what now video, a follow up email from us that you're going to get yours today, Janet, after this call with webinars that we have of education, food is medicine with Dr. Jeffrey Alfonsi and Dr. Bush, a webinar during awareness month. We pour education into you after your scan as well. And we send you away with your report in hand, along with the doctor's note to explain to your doctor, your naturopath, there you go, um, that because that is important. It's, and a doctor's note to share with them because they may not know about this. We're really on a mission to educate them as well because when more people know about REMS and there's, it's more accessible, we're going to have a bigger impact. Anything you'd like to add there? I know before we show your scan, you had an experience and had your scan. From your perspective, how, how was that experience? Um, well, I, I had been waiting for the scan for a long time because I don't have a provider up here in my area or north of us. So just getting our schedules together was um, a little dicey, I guess, but I was thrilled to death to finally get it. It is so easy. It's just the same as getting an ultrasound, except in a more, in a less clinical fashion for me anyway. Um, I love the fact that I was able to get information right. at the same time as getting the scan and not having to wait like you have to with a DEXA scan. And then only the information that the doctor chooses to give you uh, with the DEXA. I got the front page of the report uh, provided by my doctor. I had to go to physical therapy at the hospital in order to get the full report. So it was it was a nice, informative, relaxed, um, actually had a really good time. <laughs> But no, it's something yeah. um, it's something I have been talking about both on my social media and to people that I see here to try and get them to understand that this is something well worth the investment. Like I do understand that not all health benefits cover the scan. If you have a health spending account, there's a, a, a possibility of that happening or under your diagnostics. But if it's not covered, it's well worth the investment for the peace of mind that it's going to give you. 
Well, and like someone yesterday said to us, not only that, it could also be written off your taxes, but it also is far less expensive than the, the money you spend on the medication, oh. if you especially if you don't need the medication, which is very expensive. So once again, we're we're really fighting a battle of changing the, the mindset of Canadians from this pill for no wait till it's broken to investing in our health. And so to that point, you know, to uh, the research speaks to the spine and left hip. That's what DEXA does. Um, and when you come for your REMS, you're going to get your spine and left hip. But what we encourage you to do is do your spine in both hips for a couple of reasons, to get a more comprehensive picture. Uh, Megan and I are working with other, as we've mentioned, other physicians around the globe and doing research and therefore more information is important. And so um, we, if you get a spine in both hips, it's $180. And I recognize that that for some people may be a lot of money, but it's an investment in your health and in your future. Um, and I would argue that we spend $180 doing things that aren't good for our health. Um, and this is, a, you know, something that you can do um, that could be a, a game changer. So let's, let's now, I'm just going to share my screen and bring up your spine report. And just for everybody watching, Janet has given us permission and she's the one that wanted this recorded just because we care about patient confidentiality and, the pri and privacy. There's the regulated health professional in me, but I'm going to share that. Um, because your personal information is on this, I'm going to move it up. There we go. Um, so this is the first page of the report. Um, and as you can see, it's very visual, very colorful, um, which, which is great. Now, what Dr. Bush will always say is we want to be in the green. Green is good. Uh, yellow is really the, the area of osteopenia and red is osteoporosis. As I mentioned in our call earlier, the T-score comparing you to a database of 30 year olds with peak bone mass. The Z-score, which I did not mention, is comparing you to a database of, of people five years, either your cohort, either side of your age. Because we know, as we talked about, the peak bone mass, bone mineral density starts to decline as we age. So it's looking at where are you in comparison to people your age. And as you can see here, this is a you know standard deviation. It's minus 0.1. So you're not that far away the normal within your age group. Your T-score was minus 1.8 in your spine. What was it, What did you say it was on your DEXA? Um, 18 months ago was minus 1.9. Okay, so what I love about that is we're showing accuracy and, and concordance uh, with your DEXA. Um, and of course here, what I love about the REMS as well is that unlike the DEXA, you can get a report whether there's artifacts in error or not. And you may be sent away with a report full of errors and a treatment plan based on those errors. If Megan, your sonographer is doing this scan and does not the machine the artificial intelligence of this machine doesn't get enough quality information. That graph on the right, that's all yellow, that shows your spine is, is in the osteopenic right. range. It would be gray, and Megan would do it again because it wouldn't it wouldn't give a result unless they had enough information to get it. Which I think is a really um, it, it's heart not heartwarming, but it, it it makes me feel better as a patient to know that I'm getting a result um, and it's not going to be skewed with with artifacts. You can also see here, which is interesting um, in yours, it shows you the BMD at each level of the spine, and you have osteoarthritis, um, and you'll notice that your T score at L2 is minus two point three. I actually don't have osteoarthritis. What I do have in my yes. L3 is um, deteriorating disc disease. Degenerative. Oh, oh, Degenerative. Sorry, yeah. that, you know what? Yeah. I spoke to somebody earlier today with osteoarthritis. You're right. Degenerative. Yeah, it's DDD. Yep. Sorry. Yep. But that, of course, and that would explain, you know, the, the bit of the change at L2. Um, it's picking up on that. What it's also going to show, if we go to the second page, and this is what excites us, that fragility risk fracture score, your bone quality. And as you can see here, which is pretty exciting for you, you are right along the line, you're right at your fragility score. And this is out of a thousand. So it's it's at 37. You're you're just right at the edge. You're in, still in green, um, just at the edge of yellow. So it's telling us that in fact, Janet, your bone strength is good. Okay. So here's your left hip. And so here we can see your T-score is minus 2.1. 
what was it your what was your hip your left hip on minus 2.5 okay so you were a little worse and that would have put you in the osteopenic or osteoporotic range because minus 2.5 is the threshold your t-score is 0.4 and then if we go and look at your fragility risk fracture your score a little bit worse 34.9 but not not a great deal worse but still just peeking into the yellow um which um and like I said at the beginning, I am not a doctor, uh, but Dr. Andy Bush will candidly say, and he said this on our webinar that we'll be sharing, our symposium, that in his bone health practice, and by the way, 25 years plus uh, practicing as an orthopedic surgeon and doing bone health, trained in DEXA, trained in REMS, and now only relies on REMS, and, and really believes the focus should shift from BMD to fragility risk fracture score. And Dr. Zambito said the same thing. Thing. we are focusing on the wrong thing we're focusing on t-score when we should be focusing on fracture risk rems gives us your fracture risk and when you're in that just that peeking into the yellow dr bush would candidly say in his practice he would not suggest medications and for anybody watching just so you know that come to have scans with us you can get an educational consult with dr bush there is a fee for that, which you can speak to him about, but he's willing to do educational consults because he is committed, just like we are, to educating and empowering everyday people to have more information so they can advocate for themselves with their heart. That's really cool. And then we also did your right hip, which was in and about the same. Do you want me to show that as well? So here you are here. So um, a little bit, you know, a little bit mi minus 2.0. So if I could interject there. Just for a quick moment, um, the reason why we're doing both hips too is then we can, uh, it's a bit of a quality assurance for our own assessments. So if we, we, we can look at all the numbers and we want to make sure that there's concordance between the two hips, but also that there's a concordance between the spine and both the hips as well. So we want to check that there's not greater than one standard deviation between the spine and the hips and also between the hips themselves. So that would encourage us to take a second look possibly and just to say, okay, numbers aren't really coming out the way I expected. Maybe I'm going to take a look again. Um, and in your case, Janet, I'm not sure if you remember, we scanned your spine twice because of that L2 level. So, um, but between those two scans of your spine, there was, it was exactly the same. Like there might've been 0.1 difference, but it was basically exactly the same at L2. So I felt encouraged that, that, that was a quality assurance that this was a good, accurate test for you. So I'm very interested to see what your DEXA is going to look like for L2, if you're able to get that information. I think it'd be good to, to cross-reference. Yeah. So, yeah sorry. I'm so glad you pointed that because discordance and errors are critically important and they happen a lot with DEXA. And I love the fact, and like Dr. Bush will say, and I love it, there's no light between the numbers, meaning there's so much accuracy with REMS. There's no light between those numbers, right and left hip and spine. There, If it's within one standard deviation, we can confidently say that that is an accurate test because it's it's concordant and that gives peace of mind to people everyday people but also to your clinician to make decisions on your care because we know that it it is a um it is an accurate result this also so you, you understand this graph this is looking at the people that it that have actually fractured and so there's a low risk of you actually fracturing um and this is not a percentage this is looking at your as it shows on the first page um, this is not a percentage. This is out of a thousand. We're going to actually do a whole educational webinar on this because there's a lot of misinformation online and people sharing what they think is facts. And in fact, it is not, it's their opinion or it's, they don't understand. There are right. different types of fractures and we're going to have um, an intervention radiologist on with us because defining different types of fractures and in our symposium, we did talk about underlying conditions or you can go and then be in a car accident and sustain a fracture that is a different type of fracture a than a compression yeah. fracture osteoporosis so mm -hmm. let's be clear that there's different types of fractures and let's not jumble up and confuse this conversation because we have to be very clear about what the difference is in the different types of fractures. And we really want to do more education on that because there's a lot of misinformation that's out there saying, oh, well, I had my REMS and, you know, it told me I had a low fragility risk fracture score and then I fractured, you know, three weeks later. And then we find out 
<laughs> that in fact, they had all kinds of other underlying conditions. And in fact, it wasn't an osteoporotic fracture. Like there, there are many different types of fractures. Right. Um, and we focus mostly on traumatic and non-traumatic fractures, right? With the non-traumatic being, if you are standing and you fall from that height, that is considered non-traumatic. Like you right. shouldn't be fractured. Well, you shouldn't be fracturing if you fall just uh, yes, and we should encourage people to dig deeper if they do fracture to the why. why? So is their underlying conditions before they get on medication? So, you know, do you, is your parathyroid? Do you have something with your kidneys? Yes. Is there, what is at play here? But often, sadly, what we're seeing, it's not, there's no, not that investigation. They see a T-score and then yeah. out comes the script to write for medication. We're not against writing medication where indicated. But what we want you to do is be more investigative as to why this is the case. What is yeah. there is there something underlying that we should be looking into and addressing as well, because it can lead to catastrophic um, results if you're not being aware of the underlying condition. So we're going and, to do more education on that. Right. And I think that's something that's really important for us to remember across the board. I, it's actually something I learned from TikTok um, from um, um a med student is that when you're in with your doctor and he gives you a diagnosis of something and is ready to pull out that prescription pad or whatever, ask for the differential diagnosis. Right. So that you can see what his thinking process was, what he ruled out and why he decided that that's what it was. And since I've heard that, I think my doctor <laughs> dreads me coming to, to see him now. Well, you know what? And thanks for bringing that up. And, and I want to say this, that We've been taught through our system to be passive participants in our health. Yep. It, is, it can be scary, intimidating for a lot of people to be to advocate because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I respect the knowledge of physicians and surgeons and we need them. But we've been taught, you don't, we don't, don't question. question. Don't question. They're on a pedestal and, oh, who are you to question? Well, I'm telling you that your body, your health, it is your right to ask questions. And it's all the way in which we do. It. And if you come informed, not just with Dr. Google and you're putting on your pretend medical hat, but in fact, with evidence, which is why we're trying to say to you, here's the study. Here. So when you go to your doctor, that's why when you, we give you a report, we have a doctor's note that you can say, actually, I learned this from this and here's the source. And you're almost educating them as well because they may not know, for example, about REMS, but that goes with anything. You're confident and you have the ability to do that. I want to also recognize that a lot of people feel intimidated to do that. Right. But what we're here to do is try to breathe belief into you so that you have a voice, so that you can go and do that. And then it's not wrong. And if you are considered a difficult patient, I've been one of those since a young girl when I had a very severe diagnosis that I went on. Well, I went undiagnosed for years. And that's what really ignited my whole career in preventative integrative health and patient uh, at, um, advocacy. I don't care that they see me as a difficult patient. What I care about is having an integrative team where we work better together and I'm part of that team so that we can get better outcomes. And when you do that in a respectful way, and that's what we're here to do is try to improve your health esteem. And I think that's a great way to end this conversation is, is be your own advocate, but lean in on the people around you like us and the people that we're adding to this toolbox so that you can have better health esteem. So follow us on social media. Go to FAMCAST and, and subscribe um, and watch our, our uh, podcast. Follow people like you who are ambassadors and educators in their own right and inform yourself and we'll be better together and change the legacy of healthcare in this country. And I love to, I love the, your term of health esteem. I mean, that, that kind of says it all. So I, I'm going to use that again. <laughs> I hope that's okay. A hundred percent. And we're going to be using it a lot. In fact, it is really important as well as the call to action of being the CEO of your health. You know, I know that the government is now focusing on patient self-management. That sounds really kind of daunting and, you know, people like the idea, but they don't know where to turn. I love the idea of as does Megan of helping you be the CEO of your health, meaning you're in the driver's seat, but it's collaborative, it's integrative. We need conventional medicine equally as much as we need complementary medicine. Notice I right. didn't say alternative. Absolutely. And we need to better together. 
And that's what this conversation was about today. And although we went longer than maybe we would have liked, I think what we've spoken to uh, today in a candid way is very educational and valuable. And, and it's been an honor to be able to share it with you. Well, I, it's a pleasure speaking with you always. And I wanna thank you for taking the time. Uh, I know that I did get um, a review of what the report said from Megan but to have it available so that I can record it, even though I think some of the recording might be a little skewed because of my internet speed here, uh, I'm gonna do my best to get it up on YouTube so that I can share it and maybe use even little clips of it um, in my social media, uh, TikToks and stuff like that, just to help. As long as you promise to tag us because we Absolutely. wanna work together. <laughs> Absolutely, always. <laughs> also, 